space full of planets just waiting to be colonized or taken by force. This video I'll be reviewing Eminent Domain after this. Hey there, it's Theo from Geeky Gamer Guy. On this channel, I do all things board games from top five lists of a specific topic, playthroughs, reviews, just like this one. Two how to plays where I expose the full rules of the game at hand, so if you don't want to miss out, think about subscribing. How will you rule your empire? Let's find out now. Eminent Domain is a deck building game for two to four players. Each player is aiming to build the most influential empire. To do this, players will need to expand across the stars by occupying planets, research technologies, and trade produced goods. During setup, each of the roll cards are grouped together and stacked on the central card display in the middle of the table. The three different groups of technology cards are set on the table as well. Then, players are each given the same 10 cards that make up their starting decks. These cards are a mix of the ones found in the central card display. Finally, each player is dealt a starting planet tile face down. A player's turn is split into three phases. Action, Roll, and Clean Up. During the action phase, a player may use a card from their hand for its action effect. Like using the card survey to draw two cards, or the research card to thin out a player's deck by removing cards from their hand. After that, the roll phase begins. The active player must choose one of the five roll cards to lead from the central card display. Survey, Warfare, Colonize, Produce Trade, or Research. Taking the card and playing it in front of them. Then the player can boost that roll card with matching symbols of the played roll from their hand or empire. So for example, when a player plays the research roll card, they can get one research symbol provided from the card to acquire technologies. None cost that low. But they can boost it by adding additional research symbols to the roll card. A technology can be attained after that at least three research symbols are used and one to three matching planet types are in a player's empire. Speaking of planets, the only way to flip over a face down planet and acquire its effects is by using the colonize or warfare cards to settle or attack it. After the current player has performed a roll, all other players can do one of two things. Either follow the selected roll by using symbols from their own empire or cards from their hand, or descent, drawing one card to their hand. After that, the current player discards their played cards as well as any others they want from their hand and draws back up to the hand limit, which starts at 5 but can be increased by some planet's effects. Play continues like that until the influence supply or a certain number of stacks in the central card display are depleted. Then players have one final round to score as much influence points as possible. After that, players count up the number of influence from their face-up planets, influence tokens, and technology cards. The player with the most influence wins. I'm gonna get this right out of the way. I love this game. It's an interesting mix of some of my favorite mechanics, role selection, and deck building. The role selection with the addition of using cards in your hand to boost it really makes for a familiar, yet unique and enjoyable experience. As you may know, I'm a huge fan of multi-use cards. What I love about these is that they have many uses but are easy to understand. Either use it for its action, role, or symbols. Plus, unlike other games with multi-use cards, iconography is few and consistent, making it painless to wrap your head around. There are many viable paths to victory. You can colonize or attack planets to flip them face up, you can produce and trade resources that some of the planets provide, or you can research technologies to bolster your hand with enhanced abilities. Which path or combination of them you choose depends on how you decide to gain influence. Each can win you the game. There's a ton of replay value, from the different ways to play, as well as a large variety of planets to acquire or technologies to learn. Just choosing different technologies changes the game and how you play it. The theme here is classic sleek space. The cards have nice sci-fi art, and the graphic design is clean and makes things legible to read. I also like that all the card descriptions of what they do is short and sweet. No walls of text to slow up the game. I love the different sized fighter ships that are used to attack planets. They had a nice thematic touch and had me going pew pew when attacking a planet. Now just because I'm pretty crazy for this game doesn't mean there aren't things that I think could use some improvements. I found playing the game with two players to be a bit slow especially since all the roll cards are used regardless of player count. 
It would be a non-issue with three to four players, but different setups would have been nice to see. While I think the different sized fighter ships are freaking cool, each size does nothing different and are really just there more for aesthetics than gameplay. Later expansions address these issues though. Lastly, I do like the space theme, but it really isn't very unique. Luckily, the mixture of mechanics far outweigh this. So if you're looking for an awesome deck building game that's easy to pick up, but as deep as the black vacuum of space, you should definitely check this one out. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you want more, check out what I'm playing over on my Instagram or come interact with me on Twitter. I'd love to connect with you. Also, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Until next time, stay geeky, keep gaming. Pew pew. Pew pew! Pew pew! Pew pew! <laughs>